I want to talk about the relationship between angular speed and linear speed here today. The idea is you've got an object moving on a circle and apparently I have my eraser turned on so let's um, grab that point on the circle and it's moving around that circle at a particular speed. I don't know. But it's, it's moving anyway. And I can think about that in a couple different ways. Either you can look at how much arc it's, you know, what's the length of the arc that it's swept out as it's moving. Or if you think about, you know, looking at it, say, from a point in the middle, you can look at the angle through which it's turned. Right? And, well, if the circle is a particular circle, you may know what the radius is. And, uh, well, we have a relationship between the angle, the arc, and the, and the um, radius, because the arc length is the radius times the angle, provided, of course, that that angle is measured in radians, right? So, if we start talking about speed, if you talk about the sort of the linear speed of this thing as it's moving around, um, linear speed, that's distance divided by time. So that's arc length divided by time. The book uses the, the letter V to talk about the linear speed, that's like velocity. Um, there's also the notion of the angular speed or angular velocity and that would be the amount of change in the angle divided by how much time it took. If you traveled 15 inches in 5 seconds, well that would be 15 divided by 5, that would be 3 seconds per sorry, if you did 15 inches in 3 seconds that would be 15 inches divided by 3 seconds, that would be 5 inches per second. That's a linear speed. On the other hand, if you do angular speed, if you said, hey, I turned through 2 radians in 3 seconds, that would be 2 thirds of a radian per second. Right? That's an angular speed. Now our book uses the letter, it looks like a W, but it's actually a Greek letter omega. I will just probably use a W um, for angular speed. Now, as there's a relationship between arc length and radius, there is also a similar relationship between the angular speed and the linear speed. Um, and that's reasonably easy to, to see what it is because the, linea the angular speed is the change in the angle divided by the amount of time that passes. Um, this is not the way I wanted to do this. Let's start again. Sorry. Let's go right up here and say that the linear speed, that's what I want, is the arc length divided by the time. Um, but the arc length is the radius times the angle divided by the time. If I rewrite this as the radius times the angle divided by time, well that's equal to the radius times omega. That's the, the linear speed is the radius times let me write that down. The linear speed is the radius times the angular speed in the same way that the arc length is the radius times the angle. Either way, you got to make sure you are in radians, right, both of these. So this would be radians per unit time, this would just be radians. Okay. Quick example here or two, um, suppose I've got a circle and I've got a particle moving along the circle, um, moving at 4 inches per second and I've got a circle here of radius 5. How does 4 inches per second change into an angular measure? Well, V equals R times W. This 4 inches per second, that's, a, that's inches is a linear measure, so that's 4 inches per second equals the radius of 5, I guess this is 5 inches, times W. I can solve for W as 5 by 5. 4 divided by 5 
Notice that this is inches per second divided by inches. And the inches cancel out and you just get per second. That's why you end up with radians, because remember the radians don't really have a measure. So this is um, 0.8 radians per second. On the other hand, if you know the angular speed, in fact, let's do an example where, um, say you've got a wheel spinning, wheel spins at 30 RPM. RPM is rotations per minute. So that's not radians per minute, that's rotations per minute. So this thing is spinning here, 30 rotations per minute. The question is, if you look at a point on the edge, how fast is it moving? How fast is the edge moving? How fast is the edge moving? Well, I need one more bit of information because um, I need to know the radius. So let's say the radius is two feet. Well, 30 rotations per minute, let's change that into, what the heck is going on? 30 rotations per minute. Let's turn that into radians per minute. And I do that by an exchange rate, that one rotation is worth two pi radians. So we're up to 60 pi radians per minute. Right? This is the angular speed. I want to convert the angular speed into the linear speed. Well, the linear speed is the radius times the angular speed. So the radius here is 2 feet. The rotational speed is 60 radians per minute. If I just look at the at the labels here, this looks like it's going to be feet times radians per minute. And I got to remember though, that radians isn't actually a label. That radian measure doesn't have its unit list, um, doesn't have a, a label. So um, this really is feet divided by minutes. Uh, and I lost a pi in there somewhere. That was 60 pi, wasn't it? So I end up with 120 pi radians per minute, which is, um, no, I don't, sorry, <laughs> uh, too many mistakes here. Uh, the point is the radians aren't, this is feet per minute, it's 20 pi feet per minute. And so that's three, so uh, what's 120 times pi? Um, let me grab my calculator here and say 120 oops, times pi and that's 377.976.99 whatever. feet per minute. Right. If you know angular speed, you can find linear speed. If you know linear speed, you can find angular speed. The relationship is the linear speed is the radius times the angular speed.